reception. Um, my name is Abigail Boyer uh, with the Cleary Center, and this is our first step training campus safety professionals webinar. We're really excited to bring this webinar and have this particular space to talk about some training strategies and resources. It's something that we do, the Cleary Center does every year for National Campus Safety Awareness Month is to create um, professional development opportunities as well as free resources for colleges and universities. And we really appreciate this opportunity to work with Allied Universal to be able to um, offer videos, which is, is something that a lot of institutions often reach out to us about, um, especially related to this topical area, which is training for public safety in particular. Um, before we dive too far into content, I want to give an opportunity for um, the other presenters today to introduce themselves. Um, because we wanted to encourage questions and communication, my colleague Laura Egan is on the line, and her primary role is really going to be kind of hanging on the chat box to see if there are questions coming in from all of you. Um, if there are questions that are relevant to everyone, we might incorporate them certainly into how we respond aloud, but that also creates another space for you to be able able to ask questions and to have someone um, readily available to respond throughout the webinar. So, Laura, if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment to introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks so much, Abby, and good afternoon or good morning, depending on who you are, to all of our participants today. As Abby said, my name is Laura. I've been with the Perry Center for about three years now. I'm sorry, two years. Excuse me. I'm advancing myself a little bit. Uh, just two years, but I'm really excited that this is my third National Campus Safety Awareness Month to uh, celebrate with all of you all today, and thank you so much for choosing to make today um, today's webinar part of your National Campus Safety Awareness Month experience. Great. And so I want to hand it over um, to do an introduction from Jonathan Casa, the Director of Higher Education at Allied Universal, who's going to lend some insight from his own experience during the webinar today. Jonathan? Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here with everyone today. Thanks for taking the time to be part of this webinar. We feel it's a really important topic and look forward to learning from our friends online as well. Uh, I actually began with the Cleary Center. I have 10 years in higher education. I'm a former executive director. I then was at Margolis Healy. Uh, ended up running operations and development with my good friends uh, Gary and Stephen and Dan Pascal and the team. And for just about two years, I've been at Allied Universal uh, very happy to be part of the higher education team. Uh, also with, with us today, though uh, not speaking, a bit in the Laura role that Abby uh, described as well, is my counterpart, Paul Caruso. We both uh, serve the, our, our nation's campuses in higher education for Allied Universal. Paul has 35 years of experience in complex management of security service delivery. Uh, on dozens of, uh, that includes dozens of campuses nationwide. Paul's also a member of the ASIS International Council on School Safety and Security, and he will be in Dallas uh, and at the booth as well as events, and he's part of that committee. So please, if you're in Dallas, say hello to Paul. He's going to be uh, also uh, reviewing the chat and uh, helping out behind the scenes. Great. <clears throat> So we always just like to start a little bit um, with background as to why we do the work that we do, and certainly here at the Cleary Center, a lot of that um, work is, is in honor of Jean Cleary, who you see on the screen. Um, her parents, Connie and Howard, after the death of their daughter Jean in um, 1986, she was raped and murdered on a, on a college campus by another student. Uh, they really work to create consistency and transparency so that regardless of where someone goes to a college or university, that there can be effective procedures for prevention and response. So a lot of our work at the Cleary Center really has that same goal. How do we make sure that the students on our campuses, um, when they do choose an institution, that they have access to all of the um, different options and resources and really know all of the hard work you all put in every single day um, to keep them and, to, and the campus community as a whole safe. Um, and our primary role as an organization is really working together with colleges and universities in order to do that. And training is a huge part of the work that we do, um, both offering training ourselves and working with colleges and universities as they figure out the best options for them um, in providing this information and uh, campus safety uh, information and education as a whole to their community. 
So on the screen you see a few of our core program and initiatives. Our Clery Center membership um, is one that really just packages our training, our services, expertise, and, and various different resources to encourage a team-based approach to Clery compliance in particular, but certainly campus safety as a whole. So you might hear us reference certain experiences um, or feedback that we get from members or work that we do with members because um, that's really one of the places where we get to do a lot of this on the ground development, working with them to figure out how can we have a team approach to the campus or, uh, safety work that we do, that, because we know that campus safety is something that goes beyond just individuals that have roles within campus public safety. Uh, another aspect of that is certainly National Campus Safety Awareness Month, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the initiative for this year just to make sure you're able to connect to all of the resources that we do have available this year. And then we continue our work certainly in, in policy and training in other areas, really um, trying to make sure that we're a part of all of the conversations around um, where we're moving as colleges and universities, what type of policies we might need in place, and how we can make sure um, that we're complying with those that currently exist to the benefit of the members of our community. So the theme for um, National Campus Safety Awareness Month for this year is take the first step. And one of the reasons for that is we often get phone calls and emails from institutions that are saying, I want to do particular work in this area, but I don't know where to get started or how to get started. And so since we always do free professional development and resources for National Campus Safety Awareness Month, um, we thought that that was a great opportunity to really address that particular need to figure out um, for some of the key areas that we know are concerns for colleges and universities, how can we help to create resources and learning opportunities to help them address all of those. We also do recognize that September is quite a, a busy month at every institution, so you may not be able to access them um, in real time in September. So um, for those of you listening to the recording and those of you who um, you know, certainly need to multitask in the way that we know that you all do, know that these resources are available throughout the year as well. Um, we also recognize that there's a lot going on currently in our country um, with, with weather and national disasters and, and many other concerns that many of you are um, playing a role in responding to. So um, again, please always know that those resources are intended to be there for you, whether it's today or for the remainder of the year. Um, and what we're, uh, the primary res resources we're going to talk about today are free resources that you can share with your community and also other professionals that you may be working with. So with that in mind, I want to give Jonathan a chance to talk a little bit. I know he um, shared a little bit about his background, but share a little bit more about Allied Universal and the role that he and they play in working with campuses nationwide. Thank you, Abby. We are part of a 30-year legacy focused on higher education in that specific vertical market. Uh, we're the only security services provider with that investment in, in expertise and that informs uh, really why this project came together, some of the initiatives, why we saw this as a worthwhile initiative to also support the industry and give back to campus public safety programs nationwide with these free resources. What informs mm -hmm. our work is that we are on over 170, we, are, we partner with over 170 institutions of higher education nationwide. We have a community of practice as well, so our operational leaders, part of a 15-member committee that's balanced nationwide across all types of campuses and clients that we serve, from clients in which we provide all of the services which are outsourced, which is a very small percentage, to a majority of which are hybrid programs in which we reinforce and support initiatives that help your campus public safety departments attain a higher level of 21st century campus public safety and security. In order to do that, we have over 5,000 campus security officers in over 500 sites nationwide. So that means that we are really focused on the training, and that means having to be ahead of the market in terms of recruitment, understanding the labor markets uh, in each region down to the, the town and sometimes your own block and what the hiring practices are and wages. The training is very important in making sure that a campus community has the proper support 
so that it's not just about compliance and those type of blind spots, but really what's the fabric of a community and how we can add to that culture and the mission of an institution by maintaining their philosophy and understanding that our employees can be a part of that. So in any given year, we have close to one million applicants that apply at Allied Universal. We have to then go through that list, and it's a very small percentage, I believe less than 10% that we actually accept. So it's in recruitment and then training and making sure we maintain that on campuses that uh, has really informed uh, some of the topics and what we will share in today's presentation. Thank you, Abby. And I, you know, I love, you know, you were talking about this emphasis on um, recruitment and training, and I think training is such an important piece because we know that the structures at um, institutions really vary. So um, some institutions have sworn law enforcement, some have um, non-sworn, some have a mixture, and uh, we also know that you tend to be some of, the, for those of you who are in public safety, and certainly this applies to many other departments as well, you're some of the busiest people on campus, and it can be really hard um, to find the, the time or the the resources uh, to train in all of the areas that you would like to train. So our goal for this series and really for the work that we're doing in this area is to make some of those training resources accessible to you, um, recognizing that they are not going to be the be-all and end-all um, for the subject areas that we're going to cover. They're really intended to be a primer to start the conversation on your campus, but we wanted to make sure that not only the videos but the companion resources that we provide as well give you the tools in order to do that. Um, we'll have opportunities throughout where we're going to be asking for your input and your feedback, and we really would encourage you to do that. Um, we recognize going into any one of these projects um, that the resources that we create and that we develop, every campus is going to be different as to what they're looking for and what works for them or what doesn't work for them. Um, so whether you um, have things that you like about the films or whether you have questions or um, uh, feedback that you want to provide, we're really open to all of that, whether that's during the, this webinar itself or as follow-up, um, please know that that contact information is there and we are seeking out that type of feedback. So today our goals are to identify training areas for campus public safety officers, um, provide some context for the need for training in the field, which I think Jonathan talked a little bit about, but um, certainly we'll explore further. We'll introduce the roll call video series that's going to be used for the training, and we'll provide some examples of promising practices in the field of campus safety. And Jonathan, would you have anything to add regar um, regarding the goals or um, your experience before we move on to some of the tools that we'll be using? Yes, thank you, Abby. In designing, in really each campus, and even building the building, we have to tailor uh, specific post orders and the, the service delivery which must occur there. And in our travels and work nationwide in helping to design programs and reinforce the, the mission and goals of public safety, part of that strategic approach is uh, recognizing that so far there aren't really any national standards, let alone regional. We see them starting to form in areas nationwide. Uh, certain uh, IACLEA is a part of that and certain regional groups and statewide uh, associations. But we're just beginning to see this occur and hopefully these videos will be a part of adding to that uh, language and the approach for more consistent standards and a higher quality of training. And that's not to say that there aren't many good programs which already exist. I think what needs to happen is that we're trying to connect the dots between our vast community so that we share this information with each other. Because at that point, what we've really noticed, a lot of the work that Paul and I do is, is working with the C-suite, uh, as well as with our, our uh, friends, the directors and chiefs of campus public safety departments, and making sure that the value proposition is there. If we aren't able to convey the high level, the quality of training and the consistency, it's very tough to get increases to our budget which are then going to get the higher quality staff that you need to run your department. And, and so, you know, of course, bottom line still comes down to the bottom dollar and how we can convey a better return on investment because of better training and higher quality staff. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Thank you so much for that. 
Um, and I just want to make sure that everyone um, sees the response to this question. I know we had a question come in around um, if there's a hand up that will direct you to all of the, the links to download all of the videos. We're going to make sure that you have a link to a landing page where you can download um, each video so it's available um, for download as well as there are closed caption versions of the videos that will be available to you. We'll share that at the end of the webinar just because we don't want to confuse the links because we are going to be looking at some of the some clips from them as well today. So you'll be able to get uh, a glimpse of each of the webinar, of each of the videos, excuse me, um, but then you'll also be able to download all of them. All right, so um, as I mentioned, there are a couple of different things that we're going to be utilizing. Um, and I apologize if some of you are hearing some um, feedback. We're working to, to figure that out. Seems like it's working its, its way out on its own. Um, so we have the roll call training video clips. And what we'll be asking you to, to do at different points throughout the webinar is to click on specific web links that I'll direct you to. And it will give you the option um, to go into that particular link on your screen. It will pop it up. Um, once you click on it, you'll be able to, um, it'll pop up on a separate tab so that you are able to easily access that and watch that particular clip. Um, we also, as I mentioned, may have some chat box questions that will direct um, towards all of you just to get your feedback, your thoughts on some of the topic areas that we're talking about. And then um, in addition to that, we um, have um, some polls just to learn some more information about you and your role and some of the work that you're currently doing on campus. And that chat box is the best um, location to ask any questions that you have or share some thoughts um, certainly with your peers as we're going through. All right, so um, one thing that we did want to do before we go into the specific videos and we're having a little bit of sound issues, so we're just going to pause for just a moment just to work through that, and then we will um, get going in just a second. All right, so I think that will solve our problem. Thank goodness for the tech geniuses in our organization, <laughs> Megan and Amy, that we're just working through that. But if you're having any issues on your own, please um, let us know, certainly using that support or that private chat so that we can help you out as well. So we wanted to do just a quick Clery Act refresher. Not all of the videos focus specifically on Clery, but certainly they are on issues and roles that intersect with Clery. And one in particular does incorporate some of these Clery Act requirements. I just wanted to do a quick refresher as to who is involved um, in um, Clery reporting and, and Clery roles just so that we all go in on the same page. Um, the first is when we are looking at the information that we collect at our colleges and universities, we know that that information comes from a number of different sources. So certainly from public safety and, and law enforcement as well as local law enforcement, but also individuals that are considered to be campus security authorities, so the individuals who are required to report under the law. And one of the reasons why that's so relevant to, to today's discussion is one of the videos is targeted on explaining that role of campus security authorities to public safety officers um, because as we mentioned everyone um, has a different makeup as to what their public safety office looks like some are sworn some are non sworn some have a mix um, and whether or not um, kind of the reporting structures of the institution can also vary as well so it helps to give a better context as to where information is coming from and the fact that the institution will know of incidents beyond just what's reported directly to public safety and we'll talk about that further um, Clery Act reporting is tied to specific Clery Act geography. Um, we won't go too in-depth on that um, for this particular webinar since it's not the, the function of this webinar, but if that's an area of interest for you, please know that we have other free webinars on our um, YouTube page, on the Clery Center YouTube page that helps dive into that. And we, were, we talked a bit um, about that during the webinar that we did last week, uh, addressing some of the common Clery themes and challenges that we're seeing. Um, we also have, for those of you who are IACLEA members or Clery Center members, we also have a webinar with IACLEA next week um, performing the same, a similar function. 
So for what and how, we know that CLERI reporting, sometimes uh, a lot of people identify the CLERI Act with an annual obligation. We put out a report every October 1st. Um, we know that people are hard at work on that based on the number of phone calls that we're getting every single day, especially in September. Um, but we know that Cleary goes beyond that. So that annual security report is really a summary of all of the important efforts that you all are doing every single day to keep the campus community safe, both the collection of that crime, of crime statistics, which represent individuals within the community that have been harmed, but also policy statements that guide the prevention and response to crimes on your campus. Those statistics are also reported to the Department of Education who enforces the Cleary Act. And many of those policies also reinforce um, a lot of the ongoing efforts that you all do in relation to information that you share with your community via timely warning or emergency notification, as well as the rights and options that are afforded to victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking. So that's just to get us all on the same page, um, especially when we're looking at the Campus Security Authority video, certainly a lot of those areas will be relevant. So first, let's get a sense that I've talked a little bit about different roles um, that people may play on a college or university campus, and we want to get a sense on who's in this digital room, so to speak. Um, so if you can just participate in that poll to let us know uh, what your role is. So whether you're campus public safety sworn, unsworn, or non-sworn, um, facilities, emergency planning, finance, human resources, or student affairs. We also have a section for other because we know that we may not have represented all the roles in this webinar. I'm seeing some people commenting with multiple, so I think that is a really um, good reinforcement of why we were looking to create resources such as these, because so many of you are wearing multiple hats on your um, own particular campus, so the role that you play can really vary based on what hat you are wearing. All right, so it looks like we have a mix. Uh, many of you are um, non-sworn campus public safety. Um, so these videos for both sworn, but especially for non-sworn public safety, really provide an opportunity to um, do more of a deep dive in some of these specific top, uh, topical areas, um, especially since your role uh, within the campus community might be a little bit different, certainly, than sworn law enforcement, um, what you're able to do. Certainly, your enforcement authority is going to look different. All right, so I, we can go ahead and um, close out that poll, and I'll move on to the next slide. Um, but that um, certainly gives us a sense of some of the different um, folks that are participating in the room. So we do have law enforcement, but we also have a lot of representation from um, other roles as well, which is really great to see. And many of you that were putting in um, your own kind of other roles in there, we see Title IX coordinator, um, many folks that are involved in police and emergency planning. So it's great to have you all with us. So just a little bit more about this video project. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's not intended to be um, the core structure of all of your training in these topical areas that we're going to talk about. But we do know that a challenge for so many institutions is finding the time to have these necessary conversations, especially when we are talking about public safety. So we designed them for that purpose as roll call training videos. Um, so that you could utilize them during those roll call sessions when you are having that shift change. Um, we know that there's not always a lot of time, but um, these videos are all around five minutes in length. Um, and so the videos and the companion guides give you some resources to start those conversations, to learn a little bit more about what members of your community might need to know, some of the professional development areas um, that they need, and to build and grow from there. Um, so as I mentioned, we will give you the link to access um, and download all of these videos directly, as well as um, how to access that companion guide. But we also linked the companion guide in the files today in case that's helpful for reference. We think that this structure, um, even creating videos such as these, is a really good model for the type of resources that you can develop in your own community. And as you might have seen in some of the National Campus Safety Awareness Month communications, we also have a um, contest 
for institutions um, to get some free resources through the Cleary Center, you can create your own um, short public safety roll call training video, um, and we will be uh, awarding um, those uh, free resources to uh, uh, an institution that submits their video. And it's been really cool to see the content that's come in so far. Um, Jonathan, are, is there anything you would add or share regarding the development of this um, product or these resources before we talk about some of the videos in particular? Sure, and, and thanks for the poll responses. I, I think that's going to help in the way we uh, frame some of this. And uh, to that end, from a, a, a more global perspective, uh, these videos really are taking a step further. Many of us, if you're here, you're probably already going to professional development in many of these areas and topics. But what we've recognized in partnership with the Cleary Center and our work nationwide, often you know, the, the Kool-Aid we're mixing at the management level might not always be uh, the exact same mix of, you know, with, with our line staff. And what happens at 4 a.m. on a Wednesday when a student uh, approaches one of our officers. And so uh, that's part of the driver is how can we you know, be more consistent and yet deliver in a much more efficient and effective way. Uh, for us as a, a company and with over 5,000 campus safety officers, our goal is to train everyone and make sure that we have an audit, uh, a list which we can audit, that everyone is able to do this at least twice a year. I think what's important to, to reinforce is you already have your other training modules and uh, most institutions have upwards of 40 hours of higher education training and focus, uh, as does Allied Universal. And the key is we have a three-hour higher education core essentials for our line officers that reinforces this and goes much deeper. So this is a very good start. It's important in making sure that uh, you know, our organization from top to bottom has the right sensitivity to the important issues in a campus environment. But it's really what we do beyond that and the core training modules, which also reinforce what's being done. So that, you know, I don't know about anyone else, but that gets me excited. I, I think that's why we're all on this call. So thank you. And I 100% agree with that, but I am also known for being excitable. <laughs> so the first video that we're going to um, explore is one, as I mentioned, that focuses on the Cleary Act and campus security authorities. Um, and we know that a question that is likely to come in is, is this something that will then qualify as our campus security authority training? Um, what's interesting um, about Cleary reporting is there is technically no requirement under the law that you need to train your campus security authorities. But we do find it challenging to meet the goals, to meet the um, requirements if we don't have an effective method or system for communicating about this role and these requirements to those CSAs. Um, so this is certainly can be one resource out of the many resources that you share with your campus security authorities um, to help let them understand, and, and I would say specifically um, your CSAs within public safety, to help them understand um, really, one, the, the background and purpose of the Clery Act, really answering the why of um, why these federal laws or why this federal law in particular is guiding our um, response protocols or um, collecting information. But you also want to make sure that um, if you choose to utilize it, that you're pairing it with your campus-specific information. Um, because one of the um, challenges that we frequently see or, or one of the concerns um, that we uh, know some institutions have is if you rely on one resource, but that resource doesn't speak to your campus-specific process, um, then they're still going to be gaps in what's in their own knowledge and, and, um, and how to respond. So the key takeaway is our goal for this video overall, again, is to understand the background and the purpose of the Cleary Act and give them a better sense of the role and responsibilities of CSAs, especially because um, folks within campus public safety who may not be as familiar with some of the Cleary requirements, we know many folks in campus public safety are living and breathing the Cleary requirements, but depending on their role um, and their function within the institution, others may not be. So it helps give them a general sense of where this reporting is coming from um, and certainly um, including other departments on the campus.
as well as uh, reminds them that their role is also as a campus security authority, so that functionally they need to be meeting all of those requirements as well. Um, so we're just going to show a quick clip. Like I said, the, the full videos are about five minutes. The clips that we're using for this webinar, just due to, to time and to make good use of your time, are about two minutes. So what we're going to ask you to do is at the bottom um, left-hand corner of your screen, you will see in the web links tab, it will say CSA video. What we want you to do is go ahead and click on the CSA video and you'll see a button to launch it in another tab. Um, we're going to do the same on our end. The only reason we're not launching it through the web system is we um, determined that if we do that, the video and the audio don't match up. So it, it glitches out in that way and to be quite frank, makes us all a little bit nauseous. Um, so this is a better way so that you're going to be able to see it and hear it effectively through your own computer. Um, and then we can come back together and talk more about the function and the purpose of the video after you have the chance to do that. So go ahead and click on the web link CSA video. I'm going to mute us on our end to give you the Great. It looks like most of you are done or just wrapping up. Thank you so much for plugging that in. That's certainly helpful on our end just to make sure everyone had a chance to watch the video. Um, and just to reinforce, because I know we saw we had a question come in, um, again, around how we can utilize this in our training. So from a Cleary lens, from a Cleary compliance lens, there's nothing in the regulations that requires training of campus security authorities. But I think this can certainly be one aspect that you use. Um, one of the things that we talk about in a lot of our trainings is that different audiences learn in different ways. So um, a strategy that works with public safety officers might be different than what you use with RAs. It might, um, be different from what you use with counselors and so on and so forth. Um, so I think the ultimate question that I would ask you is what are your goals in communicating with a particular audience and what resource can you utilize to get to that? So if this video is one of those, you know, I think you are in the best position to determine that for your campus and you'll hear that consistently from the Cleary Center. We would never um, go into any space and say this specific training or resource is the 100% perfect one for you and your institution. Um, and I'd actually probably caution you against anyone who is telling you that because you are the expert on your campus community. But that said, one of the reasons we developed it is that we hoped that it would be a really useful resource um, when working to train campus public safety, in particular around CSAs, because the feedback that we were hearing, and a lot of this too, um, is especially from the conversations we've had with Allied Universal, is that depending on their role, you know, whether somebody's contract security, whether um, what their role is in working with the institution, whether they're sworn, whether they're non-sworn, all of those things are going to influence the amount of information that they know going in or what they're trained on. And because we know that campus public safety is a really unique environment in many ways, we're going to see this in some of the other um, video clips that we're about to watch. Uh, we really wanted, uh, and we, uh, the goal of this video was to create a resource that's useful to communicate that um, for public safety in particular. We do have companion guides um, that you, again, you'll see in the files and they're available on the page that will give you to download all of the videos. And we wanted to make sure that that type of resource was available so that as, as you're thinking about how to utilize them in the community, it gives you some um, starting talking points, questions to ask, and possible assessment questions as well um, for your own training. Um, so the answer for whether or not you should use it as part of your overall CSA training is it depends on whether or not you feel it's a good resource for you. We certainly hope that it is, um, but that is something where um, we would especially defer to you all to make that decision for your own campus. So please feel free to plug into the chat box if you have any other questions that are coming up or any um, even uh, ideas or thoughts around how some of the things that you saw in the video or that you're going to see in the video relate to challenges or areas of opportunities that you have um, seen on your own campus. Um, but hopefully that short clip gives you a general sense of the tone of the video. Again, to really go back to why is this role of a campus security authority important? 
what do we want members of our community to know? Uh, and really, uh, for many of our campuses, it's really going back to the, the basics. So what is the core structure? So you might have individuals on your campus where they're not going to know absolutely everything about Clery, but there is a specific area of Clery that you need them to know really well. So for our campus security authorities, you want them to know that if that crime is reported to them, that uh, where the information needs to go, what forms need to be used, whether there's a different reporting structure for public safety than there are for other CSAs, depends on campus to campus. Um, so are they capturing the information that you need for the individuals that are going to be counting and classifying crime and doing other kinds of response? So that's really a, a important start to that conversation and you can pair, with, pair it with some of your own campus specific resources. There are also resources on the National Campus Safety Awareness Month website that can help to reinforce that. Like, for example, um, a, we call it a one-pager, but it's actually a two-pager resource that gives an overview of what Cleary is to help explain that as well. So for this next one, we're going to be looking at um, sexual violence in higher education. And one of the reasons why we wanted to do a video like this one um, is not to cover all things um, sexual violence in higher ed because we know that there are a lot of very important um, complex discussions and trainings that we need to be offering. But an, a good starting point for many institutions is really the reminder for our public safety officers that sexual violence is broader than just rape. Um, we know that the specifics of what we see around sexual violence, particularly within the campus community, might not always be um, what we're seeing in the news or on the media, um, or on the media, in the media. Um, so, for example, so often the incidents that we're seeing, it's somebody that the person knows. Um, it could be a partner. It could be a friend. It could be an acquaintance. Um, and to making, uh, making sure that our campus community remembers that anybody can be the victim of, of this type of crime and to remind officers of their specific role in both prevention and response. So public safety might um, have a, a, a very different role than other members of the community in the way that they interact um, because they're often not just in that response mode with people coming and reporting to them, um, but they also might be patrolling or um, they would be one of the individuals on campus that is really looking to see is there anything um, that is out of the usual, um, any kind of red flags that we're seeing within our community, and to, to learn to get to know what's normal within the campus and what, it, what comes across as um, very not normal, um, so that they're in a position to respond or to connect with the people on campus who should be responding. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to ask you to click on the sexual violence and higher ed video, um, which is the second one down in your web link. My colleague Megan also just plugged it into the chat box. So for those of you who were having some trouble initially with the first one, go ahead and um, use the, the link in the chat box. And I'm going to mute ourselves um, for the next two minutes, give you a chance to watch that short clip of the video, and then we'll reconnect from there. Okay, so it looks like most people are done with that um, particular clip. So one of the things that I want to reinforce before we move on to the next one is another reason why we wanted to look at sexual violence in higher education, and we did this um, a little bit broadly because we know that that's not Cleary, it's also Title IX, and there are other intersecting um, laws and requirements is because for many people, and um, the folks on this webinar probably know this better than anyone else, if an individual is coming from another role in public safety, not on a college campus, or from another profession altogether, we know that it can be um, a little bit surprising when you're entering a college or a university because outside of um, the laws that we have elsewhere, we do have these federal laws that are guiding the prevention and response on our campus. Uh, so we wanted to have a way to start a conversation from that lens as well to remind public safety officers that are working within the community that there, one, is an advantage within their roles because they are so so um, much more ingrained in the um, institution and the environment, they're more likely to know the members of that community, uh, but that there are also things um, that they'll have to consider that the institution has to consider, um, and, and we saw Maureen Rush in the video really talk about this um, 
quite well, um, there are also different things that the institution has to consider from a broader perspective, not just with campus public safety, but with reporting overall. Um, so really, really reinforcing that those laws do guide campus response, and so understanding what they can about not just the laws themselves, but how they influence um, reporting and information sharing between those departments. Um, is really important. I think it also um, reinforces, uh, certainly, and, and we'll see this with the other videos as well, that the response of those public safety officers, you all um, that are in public safety, you know that in, in many circumstances you may be the first responders. Um, in other circumstances you're not, but the impact of those people who are responding first, regardless of what department they um, fall under, is likely going to influence how comfortable members of the community are coming forward, how likely they are to report to campus public safety, how likely they are to connect with other um, resources. And so that kind of dovetails into the next video that we are going to look at, which is um, a trauma-informed response to reports. Um, so you'll notice when you watch, certainly you'll just be seeing a clip, so you won't see all of it. Um, this is not intended to be an in-depth overview of the neurobiology of trauma, although we do talk about it a little bit. Um, again, there are a lot of really fantastic resources, the National Center for Campus Public Safety, um, the International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators, uh, Administrators the International Association <coughs> excuse me, of Chiefs and Pol of Police and other um, agencies that we mentioned, there's so many great resources around um, a trauma-informed response to reports. But what this does do, what we hope that it does, is open a conversation, start a conversation for you if you're the one training officers, if you are one of the officers watching the video, to think about that impact of the person responding. How does what I say or what I do, whether it's in those initial moments or whether it's months into uh, a particular investigation or institutional process, how does that influence um, that individual's reaction? And a good reminder that not every individual is going to react or respond in the same way, and trauma is a huge piece of that. Um, so with that in mind, let's move on to the next clip. Um, it's the one that's labeled Trauma-Informed Response to Reports. Um, my colleague Megan is also putting that into the chat box so that you can easily access it that way if you were having some trouble. Um, so go ahead and watch the trauma-informed response video and then we'll Okay, it looks like people are joining us again. So hopefully even just from that clip, you um, get a sense of the goals and the function of the, the video itself. But, but again, it's really tied back to um, not only certainly the impact if somebody has a negative response, but more importantly, um, how important their role is in responding um, to someone who uh, certainly may be um, in trauma and the recognition that everyone's experience, we saw um, Alex saying that right at the end, everyone's experience is, is so different and I don't know what trauma looks like for you. It could be someone um, even that the individual knows quite well, but we never know how we're going to um, react or respond. Um, and I think it's, it's always a really helpful um, reminder and a good conversation to continually revisit uh, because especially, you know, public safety officers are working with different members of the community every single day. So it's regardless of, you know, even if they're experts in the neurobiology of trauma, it's always a really um, thoughtful thing to remember and, and to consider that um, the person's reaction in front of you can be a response to trauma that they, they've experienced and to never assume that someone who was hurt in a specific way is always going to react or respond um, in one particular fashion, as we saw a lot of people um, reinforce within the video itself. And I think, too, um, you know, I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's an important piece to, to remember is that the response of members of the community, and I think this goes broader than just campus public safety, but how the community responds in that initial moment um, and certainly the support that they offer throughout if somebody is coming forward and making a report 
is likely to increase the engagement of that individual with the institution. So if they have a negative first experience, they're less likely to tap into maybe even other resources, whether that's confidential or non-confidential resources. Um, so making sure that we're taking time and uh, during a roll call is a really good opportunity to have that reminder um, can really uh, help to reinforce that certainly with, with officers that we're working with. This next one is about communicating with your campus community. And I think one of the themes, especially when we were doing some of the interviews for this video, one of the themes that kept on coming up is individuals who work at, in higher education, that work at a college or university, are in a place where that is the purpose. It's education. And we know that we all come from different backgrounds. We um, have different perspectives that we bring to the table. And there are always going to be com communities and identities that we need to learn more about in order to be truly helpful. So one of the biggest takeaways from this particular video is um, self-reflection for the individual watching it, for the um, members of public safety to think about what are the ways in which I'm learning about members of my community and how do I create spaces where those individuals within our community feel comfortable coming forward and sharing information with us. And the recognition that that's not always necessarily going to be in a moment of crisis. So the interactions that members of the community have with campus public safety, and again, I, I know here I'm preaching to the choir because you all do this every single day, the interactions that you have every single day with individuals, even if it's just day-to-day -day tasks that sometimes seem, um, seem simple, are influencing that perspective of public safety as a whole and um, whether or not people are likely to come forward. So we're going to take a moment um, to watch the video, and then I'm going to bring it back and ask um, Jonathan to share some thoughts on this area as well. So if you go into your web links, it's the one that is labeled communicating with your campus community. We'll take two minutes for you to watch that, and then we'll come back to the, the webinar. It looks like most of you were wrapping up with that link. I want to reinforce, I'm going to bring Jonathan in just to see if he has any thoughts on this one or, or any others that he wanted to share. But I wanted to reinforce because we did have some questions regarding um, the many acronyms and names that I um, threw out when we were talking about the neurobiology of trauma. Um, so I want to reinforce that in the First Step Public Safety Roll Call Videos Guide, we do have at the end of all of the information, there's a section that says additional resources. Um, that includes all of the different um, resources, links to all of the additional resources that I did just reference. So if you didn't get a chance to write down those different people and organizations that um, offer certain things in that area, you'll see on the additional resources page the name of the organization, the link to access them, some information on what they do, and some highlights of what to look for when you're going to their particular website. Um, but in the meantime, Jonathan, do you have any thoughts that you would add related to either communicating with your campus community or any of the other videos that we've looked at? Yes, thank you, Abby. This is one of the modules as well as the next that we're going to cover with part of the fabric that, uh, that, that we feel uh, captures the essence of what is being done in a 21st century campus public safety and security program and you know that's community based and this is the type of training where we hope that uh, we're able to assist all of you in being able to continue to push that envelope what this really comes down to is being student centric uh, realizing not only the diversity of your campus communities but that our teams also need to reflect that diversity and not just in uh, gender or race or creed but uh, intergenerational and a variety of experiences across a diversity wheel now, ultimately it's a tough metric at times to measure but uh, what we see as a successful campus public safety program versus one that might uh, be having difficulties it all rises and falls based on that connection to students and the service orientation that our frontline officers have. So that it may be a difficult metric to measure, but what are we doing to add to the social capital of the campus community? So I would frame you know, these 
two videos in particular, the communicating with the campus community and part of the fabric, uh, that's one way to convey the importance of this to your teams uh, and also to decision makers at your institution. Thank you, Abby. Absolutely. I think it's such an important um, point, and I, I think it does um, segue nicely into the part of the fabric video. Um, this is one where, you know, I've been joking, it's, it's almost like our cheerleading video in the sense that it really is to reinforce, you know, campus public safety officers are on the front lines of, of response in a number of different capacities every single day. Um, and in the last video, you heard Maureen um, Rush talk about how there are so many pieces, you know, it's not the lights and sirens response um, is the expression that she used, which I really love, but there are so many pieces of campus public safety and those day-to-day -day interactions that are so powerful and meaningful and important to the community. So the part of the fabric video is really to drive that home, to think about how campus public safety is embedded in college or university experiences, um, even more so maybe than public safety in other environments and to remind um, individuals about that important role within the community. So let's take a moment to watch the, this final clip and then we'll talk a little bit more about how you can use this and other videos um, in the work on your campus. It looks like most people are wrapping up. Um, this is one of my favorite of the five videos just because I think it is a good reminder that even small actions are incredibly meaningful on the campus. Um, and we were just talking about this morning how I think it, it's such a, a good fit and aligns really well with Security Officer Appreciation Week. So Jonathan, would you mind sharing a little bit about that week? Yeah, it, thank you for bringing that up, Abby. Uh, Security Officer Appreciation Week is every September. It's this week. Uh, hashtag thank you security. This is the third annual observance. It's not just Allied Universal, but others in the industry coming together to make sure that we thank and recognize the selfless ways that our security professionals serve their communities and they're a part of it. Not just about safety, but also just the well-being and as we discussed uh, about their important role uh, in the fabric of a campus community. So you can go to the link that, if it isn't posted already, uh, I, I believe will be in chat or in the resources. And at that landing page, you can post areas about uh, stellar security officers and campus security officers and their stories. You can also see the press release and other resources that you can share with your community not too late. We have the rest of today and tomorrow, and it's something that we hope continues to gain momentum each year. So thank you for sharing. Yeah, and just to reinforce, if you go into your web links, the final link on there is National Security Officer Appreciation Week, so that will take you where you need to go. Um, and I know that Megan's also plugging that into the chat box as well. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good glimpse of the videos. Like I said, all of them are about five minutes in length. So you saw about um, half of each of the videos, a little bit under that. So we just want to spend some time um, talking about the resources and um, how you can utilize them. Again, you're in the best position to know what works best for your campus, but we wanted to make sure that you had a good first step um, given the theme of our National Campus Safety Awareness Month. Uh, so the first point that we always want to reinforce, and I, I know we've mentioned it throughout this webinar, is that these videos are not meant to be used in isolation. They are not a substitute for um, real important um, critical conversations on your or at your own institution. But we also know that sometimes those conversations are a little bit easier if you have kind of a, a core source to, um, to kind of launch the, the discussion. So that is uh, what we hope will be a jumping off point for a comprehensive approach. You'll notice that when you look in the companion guide, some of the questions that we have related to assessment are not only assessing individuals, but also creating spaces for them to provide feedback on what they need um, more learning or education on. So um, we hope that actually some of the one aspect of utilizing this resource can be uh, causing members of your community to start thinking about, well, this is an area that I actually don't know a lot on or, or here's where I might need more information. Um, and we also wanted to structure the guide so that you have um, some thoughts as to how you can initially respond to some of the core questions as well as additional resources um, for going down that path. 
So if you look at the structure of the guides, um, they're um, divided by each video, so each video has its own particular section. You'll see at the top there's a summary and length just to give you a general sense of what to expect in the video itself. So if you're sharing this resource with someone else who was not able to participate in the webinar and they want a background on what to expect before they watch the videos, that's a really good uh, place to do it. And then we offer key themes that are captured within the video as well as guiding questions that you can pose um, if you are the one conducting training or guiding questions that you could offer up for the individual who is conducting the training to utilize as well as potential talking points. Um, so really starting to think about what are some of the things that we might want to lead discussions around, how might we respond to certain questions or ideas or thoughts. And then we wrap it up each section with the possible pre and post assessment questions so that you can think about how are we evaluating our use of this particular resource to see if it's a good fit for our community or where we might want to go next with all of the training that we're offering. So that guide is available. Um, what we'll do is um, we'll plug in the website, certainly, that you can access and download all of the videos that are available. Um, I'll do that as we're um, launching and doing this next poll, but uh, that is also linked at the bottom with some of the other documents and resources. So in the meantime, we'd like to get a sense from all of you as to what methods you currently use to train campus public safety officers. And, and I'd like to add that in, in designing how to use these videos and incorporating it into your current training program, uh, we really approach this with uh, enterprise risk management, you know, the institutionalization of the Clery Act and how multiple departments use it. So finding those ways where you could dovetail the training with other departments and use these resources, certainly they're going to be used just within your department, but there may be other ways it can be shared or used to educate others outside of campus public safety. Uh, so we hope that this, uh, from an angle also with the administration, in the risk management aspect, this is just one more way that we approach our campus security officers, whether they're in-house, whether it's part of a hybrid program, outsourced, whatever the model is that, that we use on our campuses, let's make sure that uh, this is embraced as something that could be done multiple times a year. Is there a policy? You know, for us, we have a policy that at least uh, twice a year, these roll call training videos, everyone's going to go through it. We're incorporating into our online video training system a way to track that every one of our officers has viewed and then passed a mastery quiz. So these are ways that you could further incorporate it, not just simply showing the videos, but creating discussion while also ensuring that uh, the material is being delivered and used on a daily basis. So hopefully those give you some ideas and look forward to finding out um, you know, ways that you can see this being useful as part of your program as well. And I love, you know, it kind of reinforces a lot of what you were just saying, because I love that a lot of the responses that we're seeing are multiple methods of training, and that's one of the things that we know is most effective. Different people learn in different ways. Um, but certainly you um, stylistically might tailor your approach to the culture of the department that you're working with. Um, so an example that I commonly use is that in many police departments, public safety departments, um, they might not use role plays, so to speak, but uh, many officers are very familiar with after action reviews. So you might walk through a specific scenario or concept um, with that lens, really looking at a case study or um, giving space to really talk through an experience um, when it's not in real time um, to, to create some of those learning opportunities. Um, so many of you are noting a mixture of videos and workshops and independent study, and that really is um, one of the, the uh, strategies that we always recommend. So not assuming that one um, approach fits every environment and really looking at what works best for your team. I also like the comment that said nothing static yet because I think that's really the goal in creating these types of resources. We know that not everyone is where they'd like to be in terms of consistency with how often they're able to offer training or the training topics that we can offer because you are wearing multiple hats and you are very busy doing other things. So um, our goal is to really work with you all to um, help connect you to resources and where we can offer those resources ourselves, like with these videos, um, so that you are able to do that. So we're getting towards the Abby, I'm, ahead, I'm sorry, and I, 
I'm just inspired by, by what you said as well and the responses. Uh, also, it's important for us to widen the scope and step back, not only about our interdepartmental use, but also the way we frame this for our officers and our, our command staff leadership um, in campus public safety or uh, the decision makers in the C-suite. It, it, this is about making sure we have an understanding of a vision that is beyond just a human pylon or a security zombie, that this is more than just observe, detect, and report. This is a higher education environment. It's dynamic. It's complex. There are first responders. There's crime prevention. There's uh, emergency management planning. There's so much more that goes into this, which the training reinforces. But we have to make sure our messaging uh, external to just our department goes along with explaining why these videos exist and how we're using them as part of our overall comprehensive campus public safety strategy at your institution. And I also think, you know, so many institutions have found that cross-training between departments can also be really useful. So consider where the expertise of you and your department might provide value to others within the institution if you're not already, and vice versa. There might be um, other roles or functions that are doing a lot of work around some of these um, themes that we talked about here, whether it's learning about different members of the community, whether it, um, whether it's um, a trauma-informed response or the nature of sexual violence, whatever the topic may be, um, recognize that although public safety is specialized and there are spaces where you need training specific to public safety, there might also be other members within your community that have a lot of expertise in the subject in general that might also be valuable to the work that you're doing on the campus. So we are at our um, final part for feedback and questions. So there are a couple of different ways we would love to get that from you. First of all, feel free to use that chat box if you have any questions about accessing the videos, around how to use them, or any feedback from what you saw of the clips, any questions that you have, um, anything that you might be useful. Um, if you're thinking of spaces where you might use them or you have certain um, questions or thoughts about how it would influence your campus community should you choose to use them, this is a good space to do it and go ahead and use the chat box for that. Uh, my colleague Megan also plugged in the evaluation for the day. So we um, at the Cleary Center, and I know Allied Universal um, is does the same with this. We are very data-driven in that we are looking to the people that we're working with, we're looking to our participants to inform um, what we should do or change or update um, or anything of the sort. So we really do encourage you to fill out that evaluation. It um, helps us make sure we have the best information to put out that the resources we're creating are actually meeting a need for you and for your community. So please um, do use that evaluation. Um, share with us in the chat box um, your initial thoughts, your initial feedback, um, and if not in the chat box, certainly in that evaluation itself. So in the meantime, at the top corner, I'm going to switch to the slide that just has um, Clery Center's contact information. Remember that if there are questions that go certainly beyond this webinar, but you're still looking to answer them, uh, we have additional webinars that are coming up uh, throughout the month, so even though we're getting towards the tail end of our month. so. Feel free to go to the Cleary Center website or to NACSAM, N-C-S-A-M, .org in order to do that, um, to sign up for some of those webinars, or feel free to reach out to us via email to connect to us with any questions that you might have around um, Cleary or any of the other areas. Um, I also know that I also see a couple of campus grantees um, that have some questions related to the campus grant program. So because this isn't specifically a campus grant program, um, webinar will answer those offline. So if you want to send us an email, we can certainly respond to that as well. Um, but I know that that's a common a common question, so definitely understand why why we're seeing it here. Uh, Jonathan, is there anything else as folks are wrapping up on there and any other um, items that you would add or wisdom that you would impart? No, we just appreciate the time that everyone has taken and uh, hope to continue this conversation with many of you in the field. Reach out anytime, um, especially through the Cleary Center. We look forward to other initiatives such as this in the future to unveil. And there was a question that just came in, and I'd be interested to get your thoughts on this, Jonathan. Um, she said, how do you overcome the challenge of shift work? We have seven officers who work 24-7. It's very difficult to gather everyone together any ideas. I know that this roll call 
um, training, um, especially when there's an overlap in shifts, is one of the approaches, but I was wondering if you have additional thoughts on that. Yeah, and this is why we, we crave to be efficient and yet potent. Uh, we will try to, there's the overlap lap in the shift, but there's nothing that says, sometimes it might be just one officer can go over this and we make sure in their own time, and the supervisor has follow-up along with that management. Many of our sites, we have that type of staffing model as well. It might take two or three days. We just have to plan ahead. I think it's really important uh, with the shift work is to make sure we reach out ahead of time and make sure that the officers uh, you know, respond with what will work best to them. Uh, you know, safe to say a one size fits all uh, isn't going to work. But we found on many of our sites with, with similar staffing, we just have to get granular and be flexible. Uh, the timing of this, whether it's just one five minute video a week or and really this is 25 minutes at once, uh, it's there for you to fit into the schedule that works best for your management structure, but also your, your shift workers. I also want to um, reinforce and thank you to my colleagues for the reminder. If you do fill out the evaluation survey, you can be entered into a raffle for a free Clery Act. Um, online Clery Act training registration. So um, hopefully that's something that you all might be interested in and certainly um, might be an inspiration to fill out the evaluation form. In addition to that, I'll also remind you of the contest that I mentioned earlier um, that we have related to submitting your own short um, public safety roll call videos. We've seen some already this month, which has been really great to see. Um, so the National Campus Safety Awareness Month website has more information as to how to do that um, and how to send it in to us. So we would love to see what you all are creating. Remember that this concept isn't something, although these are videos certainly that we produced, um, the concept doesn't necessarily have to um, be one that, that is that complex. So if you have members of your community that are invested, Say you have students that are looking, you know, film students that are looking for a side project or just someone on your team who really loves YouTube and uh, loves kind of playing around with their um, laptop and their cell phone videos, you might be able to create some um, videos that can be a helpful resource for your community as well um, as an alternate option when you can't always have all of the in-person learning that, that you'd like to do. So it can supplement all of that work as well. All right, so we will leave the chat box open in case there are any kind of um, final questions, but because we are towards the end of the time for our webinar, we want to just make sure um, that you all know that we really appreciate you taking the time to join us for this webinar today. We encourage you to join us for the other webinars for National Campus Safety Awareness Month, and certainly the Cleary Center provides continual education throughout the calendar year as well um, with our goal of working together with all of you to build those safer campus communities. So thanks again for joining us this afternoon. Um, thank you, Jonathan, especially for lending your time and expertise and um, for Allied Universal for their support in creating these videos. They would not be possible without you all, so we really appreciate that.